back on one of these old Kentucky hollers. Plum in the head, said an old two-room cabin. Now in this cabin live two older people, husband and wife. Their children had all married off, Clippin' and Abby, if I recall their names. He was getting along about dusky dark. Cliff, he was sitting on the boards wheeling on a chunk of cedar, resting a spell after a day's worth of chore. A little fence mending. Miss Abby was just finishing up supper. And then out of nowhere, the loud, eerie sound of a screech owl. Abby froze in her tracks. Cliff, he stopped whittling, raised his brow and looked ahead. If you're from these mountains, you know a screech owl at dusky dark meant someone was going to die. That night at the table, not much was eaten. Barely a word was even spoken for they both knew someone close was going to cross over. The next morning, as a rooster crowed, Cliff was a-milking and gathering eggs. Inside Abby was a kneading dough for bread. As she shaped it, it began to crack, and her heart skipped a beat. For she knew that was a sign that a funeral would follow her. Cliff, he took the morning milk and eggs to the spring house to keep cool. He walked in the cabin, poured himself a small amount of coffee, sipped it down, and he kissed Miss Abby on the cheek and headed out to split rails down the holler to lay some fencing. Abby set the soul in a tore seam in her blindly black dress. She knew in her heart she was going to need it soon. About midday, she was frying some apple pies for their lunch. She was figuring it was getting time for Cliff to be coming in for a little bite and a sup of coffee. She went out to get the eggs from the spring house. She carried them in to use for some cooking. That's when she noticed the eggs was an uneven number. Cliff never said anything. He gathered an uneven number of eggs, an omen of danger. Oh my, she said out loud, my sweet Cliff. The hound dog barked, an unusual bark. Abby went to the porch and saw a wagon coming up the holler with two men on horseback in tow. As they drew closer, she stepped off the porch and slowly went to meet them. I sure am sorry to have to tell you, Miss Abby. We brought Cliff home. A big oak gave up one of its limbs, and it got poor Cliff on the head. At least that's the way it appeared when we rode up on him. As a man went to carry Cliff's body inside, Abby went in and stopped the two clocks they had to prevent another death. One man rode off and spread the word and the others stayed to be with Abby. As she started washing Cliff's body and placing the only two nickels she had over his eyes, then she remembered to cover all the mirrors in the house and to open the windows so Cliff's soul wouldn't get trapped within the cabin walls. The next day they buried old Cliff in a walnut box. The men who found him stayed up with kerosene lanterns building the night of the evening after Cliff's burial, Abby was cleaning up some from the guests who had been sitting up, paying their respects to Cliff. When Abby drops a knife as she stands looking out the door, and you know in Appalachia, a dropped knife meant a man was coming to visit him. Then in the corner of her eye, she saw him. Ah, oh, she's, uh, my Cliff. His spirit come to say goodbye. He gave her a wave and he turned to walk away. As he walked away, his spirit turned to a vapor and headed for the clouds. Abby standing there, still in her black dress, had a feeling of peace, for she knew soon 
should be hand in hand with Cliff again. If you're ever out this way, give a shout out to Wabby and Cliff. I'm sure they'll answer you in the wind.